This has only happened two times prior. The first was with Corey Hill back in 2008 at UFC Fight Night 16. Hill showing a lot of head movement, eats a nice kick. And then the second was Anderson Silva back in 2013 at UFC 168. And coincidentally, he was on the receiving end against Chris Weidman. Oh, nice. He oh, no! It. He hurts! He hurts! Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another episode of Fight Anatomy. Steven here with TV Fork and today I'm joined by Golden Gloves boxing champ and undefeated 10-0 professional boxer Nick Srinderella Man Fantasy. And today we are going to be breaking down some horrific leg injuries that happened over the past weekend at UFC 261. UFC 261, it ended up starting out with two lower limb injuries to start the card. The first one was Jimmy Crude. He ended up taking an outside calf kick from Anthony Smith and in it he ended up developing drop foot from a nerve injury. And this is very interesting because co coincidentally the first episode that I did of Fight Anatomy I ended up doing the anatomy of the outside calf kick and in that I explained how exactly Dustin Poirier knocked out Conor McGregor by utilizing the outside calf kick so if you haven't seen that video you could watch the video right up over here and see exactly why the outside calf kick from Anthony Smith was so effective against Jimmy Crew. but with regard to the second injury this is the one that we really want to talk about right now in 28 years of UFC holding events this has only happened three times basically Basically what happened was we ended up seeing a compound fracture of Chris Weidman's leg. In terms of the other times this has happened, this has only happened two times prior. The first was with Corey Hill back in 2008 at UFC Fight Night 16. Hill showing a lot of head movement, eats a nice kick. And then the second was Anderson Silva back in 2013 at UFC 168. And coincidentally, he was on the receiving end against Chris Weidman. Oh, nice. He oh, no. He hurts. He hurts. The reason that this is very interesting is because one, it only happened a few times. And two, Chris Weidman was on two of the fights where this injury happened. Now. Chris Weidman, this happened to him just this past weekend. And in order to explain how exactly checking a calf kick works and why exactly it was so effective and how he broke his leg, I wanna get into the anatomy a little bit of the lower limb. When it comes to the lower leg, we basically have two main bones. We have the tibia and the fibula. The tibia, that's gonna be this really thick bone. It's gonna be the more medial bone of the lower limb. And then the fibula is gonna be this much thinner bone on the outside. And then in between the tibia and fibula, we have something called the interosseous membrane. Now, in terms of the actual muscles that attach to this area, the muscles worth noting are gonna be the anterior tibialis, the extensor digitorum longus, the extensor hallucis longus, and the fibularis tertius. Now, with regard to the anterior tibialis, basically, it is going to attach from the proximal two thirds thirds of the anterior surface of the tibia and the interosseous membrane and the lateral tibial condyle and then it's going to attach to the medial foot from the first cuneiform and the first metatarsal and then in terms of what exactly it does it's going to be responsible for dorsiflexion and inversion of the actual ankle so dorsiflexion bringing the toes toward the head and then inversion bringing the ankle to bringing the sole of the foot toward the inside next we have the extensor digitorum longus for the extensor digitorum longus, this one over here, it is going to attach from the proximal two-thirds of the fibula, so the lateral bone, and it's also going to attach the proximal one-third of the interosseous membrane and the lateral tibial condyle, and then it is going to also attach all the way to the dorsal surfaces of toes two to five. Because it attaches in those areas, it's going to be responsible once again for dorsiflexion, and this one over here, it's also going to be responsible for extension of the toes two to five, and it's also going to be responsible for a little bit of E version of the ankle, so pushing the sole of the foot toward the outside. Next, we have the extensor hallucis longus. For the extensor hallucis longus, this one right over here, it is going to attach to the middle third of the anterior fibula and the interosseous membrane, and then it is going to attach to the dorsal surface of the big toe, so digit number one. And because it attaches to those areas, it's going to be responsible once again for dorsiflexion. It's also going to be responsible for extension of the big toe, so pointing the big toe toward the head. And then lastly, it's gonna have a slight component of inversion, so bringing the sole of the foot toward the inside. And then the last muscle worth noting is going to be the fibularis tertius. The fibularis tertius, this is going to be on the lower aspect of the foot. It is going to be attaching from the distal third of the anterior, of the anterior fibula and the interosseous membrane. And then it's also going to attach to the dorsal surfaces of the base of the fifth metatarsal. The fifth metatarsal being the most lateral of the toe, so the pinky toe. And because it attaches to those areas, once again, it's going to be responsible for dorsiflexion. And this one is also going to be responsible for eversion. Now, the reason why I bring up these muscles is because if you are going to be trying to check 
a calf kick, if you engage these muscles, it's going to be a lot more painful for you as opposed to the opponent. Whereas if you keep these muscles relaxed, it's going to be a lot more painful for your opponent. And there's going to be a greater likelihood that you could check your kick, that you could actually break your leg when you are checking a kick. And this could be seen in the three examples that we listed earlier with Corey Hill in 2008. You checked his kick right here and bam. Anderson Silva in 2013. Watch this. He checks it. Oh my goodness. Wow! And with Chris Weidman just this past weekend. Woo! You could do this as a quick little experiment on yourself. I'm gonna have Nick do this just to kind of test it out, but I want him to lift his leg up and you could do this if you're following at home as well. And keeping your foot relaxed so you're not pointing your toes up or anything, I just want you to feel your shin bone right over there and just kind of go across side to side. And do you feel how it's sharp? Yep. Okay, now I want you to do the exact same thing, mm -hmm. only this time you're gonna point your toes up to the sky and go across. Mm -hmm. Do you feel how now it's not sharp anymore? Now it's a little bit more soft. Mm -hmm. So whenever you go into dorsiflexion, those four muscles are all going to be activated. And when those four muscles are activated, you are going to be covering up a lot of the tibia. Now with regard to the lower limb, this is one of the only areas in the body where there's really no musculature covering the actual bone. Everywhere else, your bones are pretty much covered. But with regard to the lower limb, the tibia, a lot of it is going to be unprotected, but when you do dorsi or when you do dorsiflex your actual ankle, it will be a little bit more protected because of the musculature being activated and it's going to take up some of that impact. But if you were to just keep your foot relaxed and you go to check a kick, it's going to be a lot sharper. So when Chris Weidman went to go throw the kick to Uriah Hall. Here it is, watch this. Joe, where did land? Oh my oh, God. Joe, where did land? Joe, where did land? Right below the knee. Right, right below, below the knee. knee. And in the what happened was Uriah Hall just slightly lifted his leg. And Chris Weidman, he ended up hitting the tibial plateau. The tibial plateau, it's this area right on the side of the actual tibia. And it's very, very hard. So if you were to kick that area and the person's foot is just kind of relaxed, they're not engaging the those four muscles that we listed, the tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, or fibularis tertius, then what's going to happen is that bone, it's going to be a lot sharper and a lot more prominent. And it's going to be a lot easier for you to break somebody's leg. So when when Uriah Hall ended up lifting up his leg, he kept his foot relaxed. And his leg. Come on, take a look at it here. Look at this. I'm not going to look, Joe. Just tell me. It was it mirrored what oh happened with him Joe. and Anderson. Oh God. When he kept his foot relaxed, what happens is the tibial plateau right over here, it's exposed. And also the tibia in general, because you don't have the musculature around that area, you're not gonna be able to absorb any of that impact through the muscle. So that is exactly what happened when Chris Weidman threw that kick. Basically, Uriah Hall just lifted up his foot, he kept his foot relaxed, and he ended up breaking the foot of Chris Weidman. If you are ever in a fight and somebody is trying to throw kicks at you and you would like to try and break their leg and check their kick, basically what you would want to do is you don't want to point your toes up to the sky because as soon as you point your toes up to the sky, it's going to be a lot more painful for you because they're going to be digging their shin right into the actual muscle rather than the actual bone. But if you keep your leg relaxed and just allow your foot to kind of drop down, then it's going to be a lot more painful and a lot more effective when you go to check a kick. And the same thing applies with regard to things like elbows. With the elbow, same thing. We have an interior interosseous membrane we have the radius which is the more lateral and then we have the ulna which is more medial and with regard to this you can do the exact same experiment if you go to feel around your forearm you're going to see that if you just keep your arm relaxed it's going to be very very sharp and then as soon as you go to flex right there all of the musculature it ends up surrounding the bone so it's going to absorb a lot of the impact if you were to go for an elbow so as with the elbow the same thing applies to the shin if you keep the foot relaxed the bone is exposed and if the bone is exposed you're going to have a much greater likelihood of injuring your opponent if they go to kick you and you go to check their kick but that is pretty much it for today's video if you guys enjoyed the video be sure to smash that like button so in order to make more of these types of videos in the future and if you're either new to the channel or haven't subscribed yet be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell as i will be uploading new videos every single day. That's it for today's video. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you again tomorrow.